Turn to John chapter 10. Start at verse 1. Read it with me. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. His voice. Mm. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who were ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have have it, what? More abundantly. In other words, supernatural life. Jesus came to you and I could not only have life, but have it more abundantly. That is supernatural. Because normal life, what you and I call a normal or standard way of living is the way the world lives. But you and I are to be above that. We are to live supernaturally in every area of our life. Does everybody understand that? Okay? Now, it says that the thief came to what? Steal kill and destroy. In other words, the devil always takes and Jesus always gives. The devil always takes and Jesus always gives. Now, you know, many of us are going through a lot of stuff. If you're not, something's not right. Hallelujah. I mean, there's always something going on. But you and I can stay in a place where there is such peace that it doesn't matter what's going on. It's just like being in a boat, you know. You're in a boat, you, you know, you're secure and there's all kinds of stuff going around you, but in this arena where you're at, you know the captain. Amen? And Jesus is the captain. He's going to bring you through whatever kind of turmoil, whatever is going on. He's going to bring you through it. But I'm telling you that the devil is a thief, and he's stole many things from me and you. But I'm telling you something else. He's got to return it. He has no choice but to return it. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Complete restoration. Oh, hallelujah. Would you turn to the book of Hosea, chapter 4. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you from being priests for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Well, that's, ta that's talking about stuff that's coming down the family line, isn't it? He said, but my own children, my own people are being destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, knowledge is truth understood. Truth is knowledge understood. Because if you don't understand the knowledge, it doesn't become truth to you. And it needs to become rhema. Rhema means life-giving. Life-giving. It needs to become such a, It needs to come from your mind into your heart or into your spirit. That's when things begin to change. There's so many people trying to live out of their mind and they get tormented, they don't know what to do, there's confusion, all kinds of things are happening. There's fear. Let me tell you, when you live out of your mind, it's fear. But when you live out of your spirit, it's hallelujah. Praise God. So where do we want to live out of our spirit, right? Our spirit. Okay, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 25. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. It says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. You know, it's our responsibility not to give place to the devil. And he gave us a few examples. He said, you know, be angry. When you're angry, if you're going to, you know, exaggerate or go beyond with anger, there's nothing wrong with being a little angry. But when you allow it to fall into sin, when you allow it to become bitter, vengeful, hatred, stuff like that, You've opened yourself up to demonic activity. So you and I cannot be or allow us to be in the arena we, where we are opened to demonic activity by allowing or making place to the devil. That's one of the things that prevent people or the body of Christ or believers from becoming abundantly blessed. That's what steals. Remember, the devil came to what? Steal, 
kill, and destroy. And God has come to bring abundant life. we got a powerful teaching called the uh, Casualties of War. And it says if you're not in the battle, you become a casualty. So you and I must be in this battle every single day. But God has given us direction through His Spirit. And those who are led by the Spirit are known as sons of God. Okay? So listen, let's go a little bit further. Let him who stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who is in need. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. So we know that your mouth is, can allow demonic activity. It can allow an open door to the devil. You know, how many times did you, the devil said something you said, well, you know, I just, that's it, I quit. I can't do this. I can't do that. Oh, the devil loves when you say, I can't. I can't. No, what we need to say is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. All right? There's something that you and I must do, though. It's very, very important. We must pursue our enemy. Too many passive believers and not enough active believers. I want to go a little bit further. So we know that it's not, we, we can't give place to the devil, right? Why we're here, go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, my brethren, what? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might, not your own. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the trickery of the devil. So you got to understand that the devil is going to always try to trick you one way or another. That's why it's so important for you and I to maintain a relationship so that we can get revelation from God. The Bible says that the Spirit tells us things to come. You know, any open door in your life, the devil has access to. And he knows exactly how to trigger certain things in our life. He knows how to bring doubt. He knows how to bring unbelief. He knows exactly how to push your button to where you speak what he wants you to speak so that he's going to move on what you speak. You're either going to move the hand of God on what you speak or the hand of the devil. All right? So when you and I speak the word of God and we pursue the devil by, with the word of God, you're going to find things going to change in your life. You know, it's so important that God has given us promises. But so many believers don't believe the promises just because it doesn't happen the way they want when they want it. They stop pursuing and they just lay it aside. Well, I guess it may not be God. How do you know that? It's amazing that when we were in the world, we'd go work two jobs and do get something. Or when we were drugging and using and stuff like that or drinking or lust and we'd chase that person down and, and we'd go through great lengths to get what we wanted to get. But when it's something with God, we have a hard time going after it. We're saying, well, if it's God, then God will bring it. Well, there is a time when God will bring certain things. But you know what? What he does is he unctions you, then causes you to pursue. That's why he says, ask, seek, amen, and the door will be open. Ask, seek, and knock. Okay, let's go a little further. Second Timothy chapter 2. Hallelujah. Complete restoration. How many of y'all want complete restoration? How many of y'all want the devil to return everything he's stolen from you? Glory to God. Well, it's available. But my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. See, the devil knows your contract. If you're not abiding according to your contract, he knows. He knows that you aren't going to get something you don't know. You remember when the, uh, Paul was in the area of Ephesus and he ran into the disciples, right? And he said, uh, did you get the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we didn't even know there was a Holy Spirit. So... But it was a promise from God, wasn't it? Anyone who would believe and wanted the Holy Spirit, it's that. It's for them. So when they finally believed that they got baptized and Paul laid hands on them, they got filled with the Holy Ghost, began to prophesy and speak in tongues. So the devil knows. He's going to try and prevent things from getting to you. He's going to try and erase all of the promises of God in your life. That's why God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, lack of truth. They are destroyed. Amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, in verse 24, And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to what? Able to teach. And what? Be patient. In humility, not in pride, correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them what? Repentance. So that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Let me tell you, the devil is out for you to do his will. That's why he loves to steal. He'll even use you to steal somebody else's blessing, if he can get away with it. He'll use you. He is out to steal, kill, and destroy. And he says here, listen, 
People become snared with the way of the devil and come captive to do his will. It says, but they got to come to their senses. You know, that's one of the reasons why we come together. That's why God commanded that we have fellowship. It says, come in unity. You know why? So that things can be exposed in our life. In every one of our lives, there may be something that God is dealing with you. Some of you are already receiving the message from the Lord tonight. It's already happening in your life. You're already going, man, you know what? I needed to have this and we're not even, we're not even halfway done. That's why it's so important for fellowship. So important. And God places us strategically in places to get what we need because he knows exactly what you need. The thing is, is so many times we think we know what we need. <laughs> and then we start hunting for what we need instead of when we get right moved out of position because the devil always tells us it's greener on the other side. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go a little further. James chapter 4. You know, sometimes the simplest things, the greatest blessings are right in front of us. In fact, the Bible tells us that God prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. It wasn't in the presence of the believers. It was in the presence of your enemies. <laughs> he says he's given you the anointing. When you get to that table, that table is loaded with promises. Then your cup runs over. That's all you have to do is pursue. Don't give up. Don't wait in somebody else. There's a time that you wait on God. What are you waiting on? You know, every time we're waiting on God, we're waiting on direction. Amen? You're waiting on direction from God so you know what to do. Lord, I don't know what to do with this. Okay, I'll get you the answer. Just hang tough. Sometimes he just comes by and sweeps you out and puts you where you're supposed to be and you don't even realize how you got there. And the next thing you know, wow. You know, but we have a tendency, the devil starts coming in saying, listen, you need to do this. You need to pay bills. You need to do, everybody needs to pay bills. You're no different. Oh man, you need to get another job. You need to do this. I mean, you know, when you feel that push of the devil, that's when you drop everything and say, no way. What I need is God. What I need is his presence. And what I need to do is be still and wait on him so he can direct me to what to do. You know what? Even when you're still, it's like sitting in a boat in calm water and you're able to enjoy everything. You don't even know you're moving. You don't even know that you're moving anywhere. All of a sudden, you're leaning against the bank of the lake or a pond or whatever. And but you are so caught up in everything else. See, God loves to move you that way also. He just moves you right where you need to be. And all of a sudden you're like, man, wow. We talk about how time is flying by, you know. We are getting so caught up in so many things. And, and God is moving rapidly in everybody's life. But the devil loves to come and try to get you so distracted that you begin to work in your own strength, work in your own power, lean on your own talents, lean on your own knowledge. And you get to, what was me? How can I do it? When can I do it? Where can I do it? And when is God going to do it? See, the whole thing is, is you forgot something. He already did it. He already did it. The Bible says that you and I are not only the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but we are the offspring of the anointed one and his anointing and joint heirs of Christ. You know your joint heirs of Christ? So that means that your inheritance is the same what Jesus has. That's why he came into the natural realm, one of the reasons. So that he can bring your inheritance to you. And that's why the, the Holy Spirit is the down payment of your inheritance. James 4. Complete restoration. The devil has to return everything he stole from you. Unless you don't know it. Or you don't know how to go about it. Amen? How many times do you, you really believe, man, you know... I, I really know what I'm doing. I, you know, this is what I really have to do. And then all of a sudden, somebody comes along and says something to you and says, man, you know, that's not God. That's not God. But man, you know, you're, and you're struggling within yourself and your flesh is screaming, come on, come on. You know, your flesh is trying to get out of the way of the, out of the presence of the Lord. Struggling within it. And you finally, finally, after you've gone through all, all kinds of stuff, sometimes you've taken that bait and you've gone and struggled and you find out, oh man, this is miserable. Or you've struggled and you chose to stay what you were supposed to do and you realize because you were accepting counsel, you realize that, man, what I would have missed if I would have listened to the voice of the stranger. Oh, hallelujah. Some of us are still listening to the voice of the stranger. So now, come on. <laughs> Tonight's the night to stop. Amen? James chapter 4. Oh, let's start at 4. Is everybody there? Read it. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore what? Submit to who? Hallelujah. Submit to his way. Resist the devil. 
and he'll flee from you. Now, I always share with people, that's the measuring tool. How much you can resist the devil is how much you can submit to God. When you can submit to God, you're able to resist the devil. If you can't submit to God, you can't resist the devil. He'll eat you up all day long. You go, woe is me, I can't do this, I can't do it. Why? Because you're not submitting to the promises of God. That's what he's saying. People go, well, I am submitting to God. I'm calling on the name of the Lord. Well, then start speaking his word. Speak his thoughts. Sometimes calling on the name of the Lord just ain't going to do what you want him to do. You know what? When you call on the name of the Lord, the Holy Spirit shows up and says, okay, let's go. And you're still calling on the name of the Lord. And he's going, come on, speak the word. Oh, Jesus, come on. When you say something, how much are you going to move God's hand? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting at verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Now, we've heard this many times over, but we still have a tendency to want to war according to the flesh. For the weapons are of warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now that's powerful. So you're all waiting on something. You want something. He says, listen, when your obedience is fulfilled, then you got it. Then you've got it. He says, casting down all thoughts or arguments that are coming, the voice of the stranger that's coming, cast those down and grab hold of the truth and the promises of God. Well, you know, I just don't feel. Well, forget Mr. Feel. He's going to deceive you every time. Yeah, but you don't know my circumstance. Well, then, you're carnal. You shouldn't know your circumstance either. What your eyes doing on your circumstance? Your eyes are supposed to be on the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity. That sounds like aggressive to me. That's called pursuit. You and I are to pursue our enemy and make him return. You know, I've shared this before. Brother Summerall, powerful evangelist, he was given a testimony one time. I, was, I think it was in one of his books I was reading something. He said that he had just come back from a conference and he walked in his room where he was staying and he noticed his bed was moved and something was different in his room. And he, was, and he happened to be glancing out the window and out of the, out of the corner of his eye or out of the, he saw a, a demon walking. And the Holy Spirit let him know that that demon was in his room. And in the name of Jesus, he commanded that demon to come back in his room and put his bed back where it belonged. And that demon did. He was aggressive. Now, you may think, well, that's crazy. They can't move. Oh, yes, they can. I've had an encounter with a demon one time to try to pull me through a, a door. And him and I were fighting. And we were pulling and pulling. I thought somebody was on the other side pulling, playing games with me. And I saw this huge shadow. And I thought, man. And then, I mean, and he was strong. And uh, when the door finally let go... I was expecting one of my friends behind the door fooling with me and nobody was there. And I was like, hello. I didn't know what they were called then. I just used to say, people, did you see that shadow? Of course, they thought I was nuts. But praise God. So listen, when your obedience is fulfilled, in other words, when you have done what God has asked you to do, that's why you be still to get direction. When you get direct, That's why we come together, so we can get direction. You're getting counsel, correction, and direction right now. What are you supposed to do? Pursue your enemy. Look at Bush. President Bush, what's he doing? He's pursuing his enemy. Man, does the world like it? No, they're condemning him. He says, and anything that's associated with what they're doing, we're coming after you too. Man, the world don't like Bush because they don't want to be pursued. The enemy is screaming because the ruler of this world is who? Satan. You don't think he's behind these terrorists? Of course he is. You don't think the enemy's behind sickness, disease, poverty, infirmity, selfishness, greed, and all the works of the flesh, fear, abortion, suicide, Amen. we got to pursue the enemy. Go to 1 Peter chapter 5. In verse 6, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your what? Man, people are still pursuing their cares. Casting your cares upon Him for He cares for you. Why? He doesn't want you looking at your cares. He doesn't want you looking at your circumstances. He wants you looking on Him so you can get your direction so you can begin to pursue your enemy. Why? Because your enemy is pursuing you. Be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he what? Amen. He's seeking whom he can devour. So he's pursuing you. He's waiting for you to make that open door. He wants you to believe in his promises, which are number lies, instead of the promises of the Lord. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 30. This is powerful what David did. 
Oh, complete restoration. Devil, you're going to get exposed tonight. The victory is already ours. And in verse 6, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, <laughs> because the soul of all the people were was grieved, every man for his own sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Let me tell you something. You know what he did? He strengthened himself. Oh, I lost this. Oh, I lost... Oh, oh, my wives, my husbands, my children. Oh, David strengthened himself. He encouraged himself. Of course it wasn't easy. You don't think that he... I mean, he just lost his wife and children and all of his... All the other military guys lost all their families. But you know what he did? He strengthened himself in the Lord. He inquired, he looked to the Lord for help and not himself. Then David said, Abiathar, the priest, Amalek's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the what? Of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? But he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover what? Oh! You're not going to get it until you pursue it. Oh, but I'm waiting on the Lord. Well, you're getting direction now. What you wait on is you wait for counsel, correction, and direction, and then you pursue. Pursuit is an act of faith, and it's faith that pleases God. It's just like when somebody's trying to get healed. That's why I usually walk them. They got problems with their legs. We pray for them. Then we walk them. What am I doing? Acting faith. I'm pursuing my enemy. How am I pursuing my enemy? Because I'm when we're walking, I'm breaking the powers of darkness, and I'm telling that devil he's a liar to loose that person. This person has been healed in the name of Jesus. Some people just aren't able to receive it yet. But if they just hold on and continue to pursue, it will manifest. Amen? And David recovered some of it, right? All of it. He recovered all. So David went, and he and the 600 men who were with him went and came to the brook of Basar, were th those stayed who were left behind. Now, some stayed who were left behind because they were tired. But David pursued, he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind who were so weary that they could not cross the brook of Basor. Then they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David. And they gave him bread and he ate and they let him drink water. Remember, he was their enemy. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk water for three days and three nights. And David said to him, To whom do you belong? Where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Egypt, servant of the Amalek, Amalekite. And my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. Nice master, right? Oh, the devil loved to leave you behind. We made an invasion in the southern area of the Cherophite in the territory which belongs to Judah in the southern area of Caleb, and we burned Ziglag with fire. Now this is where his, the people were. And David said to him, Can you take me down to this troop? And he said, Swear to me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will take you down to this troop. What was he doing? Pursuing. And when he had brought him down there, they were spread out over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing because of the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. Then David attacked them from twilight until the evening and the next day. Not a man of them escaped except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And nothing of theirs was lacking, neither small nor great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. Then David took all the flocks and the herds that they had driven before and those other livestock and said, This is David's spoil. Now David came to 200 men who had been left, who had been so weird that they would not follow David, whom they had also had been made to stay at the brook of Basor. So they went out to meet David and meet the people who were with him. And when David came near the people, he greeted them. Then all the wicked men and worthless men of those who were, went with David answered and said, Because they did not go out with us, we will not give them any of the spoil that we have recovered, except for every man's wife and children, that they may lead them away and depart. But David said, No way. That's not how we operate in the hands of God. He said, My brethren, you shall not do so with what the Lord has given us, who has preserved us and delivered into our hand 
the troop that came against us. Now let me share something with you. So many people begin to worship the blessing and they think it's theirs. That's another thing that opens the door. The devil's, let me tell you, you begin to worship your blessing, you've just opened the door. The devil waits for any open door. David said, no way, we're not going to leave these people behind. They started with us and we're going to also bless them. We're not going to leave them behind. In other words, they were with them in spirit, but they couldn't. In fact, they were protecting all the other equipment and military stuff that they had with them. So they couldn't go, but they still got the blessing, didn't they? David was in the spirit. He knew it pleased God. Oh, hallelujah. So David what? Recovered all. Hallelujah. The first thing that we got to always understand is we must inquire of the Lord. You cannot pursue without inquiry of the Lord. If you're trying to pursue without inquiry of the Lord, you'll be in trouble. Amen? That's why we need counsel, correction, and direction. Go to Exodus 22. You know, one of the things that David did, which was very powerful because he waited on the Lord and inquired of the Lord, he was able to penetrate the enemy's camp. If you do not wait on God for direction on what to do, you will not be able to penetrate the enemy's camp. You'll go to the enemy's camp Exodus 22 and verse 7. If a man delivers to his neighbor money or articles to keep and it is stolen out of the man's house, if the thief is found, he shall pay what? Has the thief been found? Hallelujah. Then he owes you. Does everybody get it? He owes you. If the thief is not found, then the master of the house should be bought, brought to the judges to see whether he has put his hand into his neighbor's goods. For any kind of trespass, whether it concerns an ox, a donkey, a sheep, clothing, or any other thing of lost, which another claims to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and a member of the judges condemned shall pay double to his neighbor. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if the thief has been found, which you know, he owes you double. Hallelujah. Now, it doesn't mean that you're going to get two wives or two husbands. Joshua chapter 10 and verse 16. It says, read it with me. These five kings had fled and hidden themselves in the cave at Makeda. And it was told Joshua, saying, the five kings have been found hidden in the cave at Makeda. So Joshua said, roll large stones against the mouth of the cave and set men by it to guard them. And do not stay there yourselves, but pursue your enemies. Oh, doesn't the devil like to bring things in your way so you stop pursuing? Joshua had wisdom, though. He said, okay, let the, since they're hiding from us, these five kings, and they're in this cave, we'll take care of that later. Just close them in there. I'm not going to get caught up on my circumstance. I'm going to close it off, and I'm going to go on pursuit. Hello? And do not stay there yourselves, but pursue your enemies and attack their rear guard. Do not allow them to enter their cities, for the Lord your God has delivered them into your hand. Do you know that the Lord has already delivered your enemy in your hand? Then it happened while Joshua and the children of Israel made an end of slaying them with a very large, very great slaughter, till they had finished, that those who escaped entered fortified cities. And all the people returned to the camp to Joshua and Makeda in peace. No one moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings to me from the cave. And they did so. And brought out those kings, those five kings to him from the cave. King of Jerusalem, King of Hebron, uh, Jeremoth, Lagrish, and the king of Eglon. So it was when they brought out those kings to Joshua that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the captains of the men of the war of war who went with him, Come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings. And they drew near and put their feet on their necks. Then Joshua said to them, Do not be afraid, nor dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus the Lord will do to your enemies against whom you fight. And afterward, Joshua struck them and killed them and hung them on five trees and they were hanging on the trees until evening. See, God took care of it all, didn't he? You know what you had to do? Keep pursuing. Pursue your enemy. So you have cancer, pursue it. 
You have diabetes, you're going blind, you're going, you know, this, you're that, you have fear, go after it. Don't just, oh, by your stripes I'm healed. No. If you don't pursue it, you don't get it. You got to pursue it. Now, I'm not saying that by your stripes it can happen, can it? But if it ain't happening, you pursue it. You pursue it. Oh, hallelujah. Go to Joshua 7. Glory to God. Start at verse 10. So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up, why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things, and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemy. Let me tell you something. If you're in pursuit, you better be clean. Because you will not stand against your enemy. You have accursed items, the devil has access to you. Music, clothes, all kinds of other stuff. You know, people, it, even where you live, where you live, I don't care if you have a roommate or something, somebody ain't right, that person is an accursed item. It's difficult to pursue your enemy, isn't it? That's why we try to clean up stuff in the campus. And when somebody sins, we, we make sure that they get right because they become the accursed item. And when you have an accursed item in the camp, it's difficult to pursue your enemy. In fact, it tells us you cannot stand before your enemy. But turned their backs before their enemies because they had become doomed to destruction. Neither, the Lord says, neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you. That's why sometimes we have to remove people. They're not willing to submit and get cleaned up. See ya. Everybody must work out their own salvation. You can't work them out. But we are accountable for things that happen. I, as the shepherd of this flock, I'm accountable that it happens to these men. I mean, we put up with so much stuff for a period of time, and then after that, it's like, see ya. If that's how you want to live, go ahead. You want to serve the devil? That's your choice. But for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. So you got to be careful. Go to Joel chapter 2. Glory to God. The devil always says, Oh man, God ain't going to do it. you got to tell him, well, he's a liar. you got to cut his head off. Rebuke him. Bind him, blind him, mute him, and deaf him. <laughs> Take care of him. Wrap him up, put him in a corner. Put a dunce head on him. You know. The book of Joel in chapter 2 and verse 25. And here, this is what he says it, prophetically. He says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts and the consuming locusts and the chewing locusts. My great army which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wonderfully with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Well, then why are they put to shame? Because they don't know the promises of God. 1 John chapter 5. Glory. Now you got to be careful to discern whether it's pursuit or push. <laughs> That's why you must inquire. If you don't inquire, you'll be pushed. That means you must pray. You must pray. You must seek. You must get counsel. You must pray. And then you must pray. After that, you got to pray. And when you're done with that, pray. And as soon as you start pursuing, pray. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Hallelujah. Then why aren't believers overcoming the world? Because they don't know the promises of God. They're not pursuers. They're sitting there twiddling their thumbs waiting on God. You wait on God for what? Counsel, correction, and direction. Then you pursue. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What? Our faith. Isn't that called pursuit? Hallelujah. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Right? 
Hallelujah. So you've already overcome if you pursue. Why? Because Jesus already overcame for you. He already set the standard. It's already done. Now you must pursue and call forth and claim those promises from God. And you come against the devil with the word of God, not with your emotions. The devil doesn't move by tears. Sometimes either does God. You remember when he went in to go heal that little girl that was dead. What did he have to do? He moved all the mourners out. All right, everybody out of here. They were all mourning around the body. Oh. And he said, okay, everybody out of here. They probably went, man, what's with this dude? Who does he think he is? Come on, this is our ritual. Traditions of men. Come on, we got to do this. I've been brought up this way. And he moved them all out and he healed her. You know, when she got up and walked out, you know, that changed their attitude. <laughs> Ooh. Take off that religious garment. Romans chapter 8. Glory. In verse 37. Yet in all these things we are what? More than conquerors. We're not wimps. More than a conqueror. That's pretty big. We are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Then what's the problem? Oh, the Lord doesn't love me. If He loved me, He would do this. No. If you loved Him, you would do this. Hallelujah. Isaiah 41. People quote, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm waiting on God. Praise God. Did you get direction? Yes. Now I'm waiting on Him to do it. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. Oh, let's start at verse 9. Everybody read it with me. You whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you, you are my servant. Everybody say, I am your servant. I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Fear not, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right or righteous hand. Ooh. He's going to hold us with His righteous hand. He's with us. See, you've got to overcome the obstacles. He's given you everything. In other words, you can't keep your eyes on circumstances. Well, it's like somebody, oh man, my house is on fire. They may go in there and try and rescue everything. Right? Instead of trying to put the fire out. I mean, it could be a simple little fire. It could be something where somebody starts, you know, a little fire on the kitchen stove. And they start going and gathering all the stuff instead of getting, putting the fire out. What did happen? They got their eyes caught up on the circumstance. And what they're trying to do is, oh man, I'm looking at the circumstance. I'm already going to lose everything. And they begin to try to save it. Instead of, just go put the fire out. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Everybody say it. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Now, when you get in trouble and the flood of the enemy comes in and all kinds of things are happening, do you speak the word? Do you inquire? Amen? Do you go to the throne or the phone? Or do you go to the throne, then the phone? <laughs> no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against me shall, in judgment, shall be what? Condemned. Condemned. Well, praise be to God. Well, everybody quotes it. In other words, we must possess the promises of God. Jeremiah chapter 1. This is good. <laughs> You remember what happened with... Now think about this. When when the Lord... When Adam and Eve blew it, right? The Lord passed judgment on the serpent. He went right to him. 
He pursued the enemy. Now, Adam and Eve made confession what they did. Of course, they tried to blame one another. But the Lord went right to the serpent and cursed him. Amen. He pursued his enemy, didn't he? Well, how much more do you and I need to pursue that enemy? Verse 9 and 10, would you read it with me? Then the Lord put forth His hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Everybody said, The Lord has put my wor His words in my mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to what? Root out and pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. That's for you. Go to verse 19. Come on, read it. They will fight against me, but they shall not prevail against me. For I am with you, says the Lord, to what? Deliver, Deliver you. Glory to God. Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Hallelujah. Complete restoration. David recovered all. So that's all of ours too. If, he, if he's got that promise and he pursued his enemy, so do we. You know what we need to do? Possess the land. Amen. The Bible says the heavens are taken by what? Force. force. The land is taken by force. You must pursue your enemy. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in what? Triumph, Triumph in what? Triumph. That means anointing. Anointing. So we talked about pursuit. We talked about prayer. Now we're talking about anointing. We talk about keeping clean, right? Now the anointing is what destroys the yoke of bondage. In other words, you can't pursue without the anointing. The devil whip you up like a wet noodle. And if you ain't right with God, the devil sees it. He knows people that try to pursue him and he kicks their butt. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. And through us, what? Diffuses the fragrance of His knowledge in every place. Manifest. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death leading to death. And to the other the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God. We speak in the sight of God in Christ with the anointing. That's rhema, life-giving. Somebody got it? Not out of your head, out of your spirit. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Hallelujah. <laughs> Complete restoration. How many of y'all want complete restoration? You know, the first thing we need to have complete restoration is within. You know what we want to be restored to? The first Adam. Amen? Where he walked and talked with Daddy in the garden. We want restoration where we are born again in spirit, walking with the spirit. And verse 1 through 3, would you read it with me? It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat who was king of Judah. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, Hey man, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria and they are in Hazazan, Tamar. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to what? Seek the Lord. What was he doing? He was inquiring, wasn't he? And proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. And when God, be, when you begin to pursue and seek, not, I mean, when you begin to seek or inquire of the Lord, God always brings you direction. In fact, He sent the prophet of the Lord. In verse 14, this is the Spirit of the Lord came upon this dude. And He told him exactly what to do. And He said, verse 15, Listen, all you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord God to you. Verse Keep going. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed because of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but who? God's. What did he do? He inquired of the Lord, didn't he? Then he told him what to do. 
17. You will need not to fight in this battle. Position yourself, spiritually position. In other words, get your eyes off of your circumstances, get your eyes off of everything else, and position yourself to receive what God has got to say to you on what He wants you to do. Position yourself. 20. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in His prophets and you'll what? Prosper. In other words, you're going to be established and you're going to have cash. Now, establish in the spirit and prosper. And not only in the spirit, but in the soul, in the body, the finances. And whatever you touch shall prosper, the Bible says. And we had consulted with the people. He appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of the holiness. As they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord for His mercies endures forever. I'm telling you what, as you worship the Lord, you must be a praiser. You must be a worshiper. During your worst circumstances, it doesn't matter. The Bible says when the flood of the enemy comes up, lift up the high praises of God. When you're being attacked, you know, sometimes you're trying to struggle with the word, you know, let's see the word says, oh, man, start praising God. You don't have to be searching for the word. As you praise God, then the anointing comes in and you pull out the sword and kick butt. Because you can't lift the sword up in the flesh. That's why it's called the sword of the spirit. It's called the sword of the spirit. Yes, but you don't know my circumstances. No, you don't know my God. Just start praising Him. Start worshiping Him. Call on His name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, but I'm sinking in sand. Yeah, but the police are here. Yeah, but praise you, Lord. Man, I'll never forget this one time I was watching the news, right? <laughs> and there was this woman that uh, her husband tried to kill her. And she was just, and the police were in, in, in her house and she was just, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just give you glory and everything. She was praising God. I think she shot her husband. I don't remember what happened. But. I don't remember what happened, but um, she, her husband tried to kill her and they either arrested him, or, but there was blood all over and stuff. And I don't know what happened, but uh, she was just praising God. And I was just blessed to watch what happened. You know, I was, my heart was hurting for her, but she was just praising God and having a good old time with you. And they were trying to, and, oh, the, and the reporters are trying to interview her. So tell us what they will praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. She wouldn't shut up for nothing. And they just left her alone. Oh, the Lord rescued me and saved me. Hallelujah, I loved it. <laughs> now what happened? So as they began to sing and to praise the Lord, set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. And then, for the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Syria, they helped to destroy one another. I mean, God really messed these people up. Now, you got our, Judah didn't even get there yet. They were still praising and worshiping God. They hadn't even been on the scene yet. And all the armies that were going to attack them killed one another. Talk about confusion in the enemy's camp. I've seen that happen in court. So when Judah came to the place overlooking the wilderness to fight... They looked toward the multitude and there were their dead bodies fallen on the earth. No one had escaped. They're like, man, what happened? We were just praising and worshiping God and having a good time. And when Jehoshaphat and the people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they had stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise. 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 Listen, one of the most important things, just like what David was showing us also, was not only David was a praise and worshiper, but he was a giver. See, after you get the blessings and God begins to bless you and prosper you, you need to be a giver. You don't hold on to these things. Remember, nothing is ours. Nothing. We need to be givers. Go to Malachi chapter 3. Because you know what? We want more for the kingdom of God. Don't stop giving. 
Never stop giving, never stop pursuing, never stop praising, and never stop praying. Hallelujah. In verse 8, it says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Hmm. You are cursed with a curse. You know, people go out and do side jobs and they put the money in their pocket and they don't tithe. You're cursed. Amen. Yeah, but you know, the Lord knows. Yes, He knows. And I want you to know, you're cursed. <laughs> it's real simple. The Lord knows you're cursed and so do I now. <laughs> and so do you. Everything you get must be tithed. Tithing protects your finances, offering increases. You know what? This ministry, this year, has never given so much in the first month. We've never given so much in the first month. And the Lord has just put on my heart. He's put something on my heart just to do. And it may not, you know, it may be like almost wiping our account out, but every, and it keeps getting filled. We've never given so much in the first month. And it's like, praise God. And we're having a good time. It gets a little shaky sometimes. But you know, the Lord, He makes way. He makes way. Hallelujah. Let's go on. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, not into your bank account. Not into the do local dope dealer or, or the bar. <laughs> bring all the ties, not into your bills. Bring the ties into the storehouse. That's why God places ministries to become storehouses. Amen. That there may be food in my house and to try me on this. Try me. God says, test me says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. You know, all I have to do give you a bigger house. Hallelujah. <laughs> Go to Acts chapter 16. It's promises of God. Be a giver. Don't look at what you can get for yourself. Be a giver. People work in crazy out there. All they need to do is give more. Right? If they can just walk in the Spirit and give more, <laughs> God will make a way. Show favor. And you know, it's not always just money that God will show you favor with. That's all the things. Cars. Well, you don't have to buy one. Uh, all kinds of stuff. I mean, those are things that save money, don't they? Instead of you having to go out and buy it, He gives it to you. Because He wants you to be blessed. He wants us to be blessed. He wants us to be healthy. And He wants you to pursue the enemy to restore what the devil stolen from you. Amen. He's got to restore it. But unless you go, don't go after it, He doesn't have to. Devil, get back here! I remember one day I was all upset. I said, in the name of Jesus, devil... I want you to go out and get this and get this and whatever and bring it to my house in Jesus' name. It got there somehow. Didn't come that day. But things have been restored. I've called it forth from the north, south, east, my devil. I command you in the name of Jesus. You know, so many times things we've asked for or whatever, we, we took it nonchalantly and it came. We didn't even realize we got it until maybe sometimes later on. Man, that's right. I remember when oh, the Holy Spirit, you know, he, he quickens you about two months afterwards after you got it already and said, you remember you prayed that in? Whoa, I forgot about that. You know? Oh, man, he just loves to bless your socks off. Even cut them half off sometimes. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Next chapter 16. Hallelujah. Is everybody Okay. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody say, Devil, devil. In, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, I rebuke you. and I command you, I command in, you. The in the name of Jesus, to restore to me, restore to me. Everything, you've stolen. everything you've stolen this year, this year. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. I command you, I command you. in the authority, in the authority 
name of, the name of Jesus to restore to me my finances, my health, my loved ones that I'm praying for, and those things you've taken from me in material, in Jesus' name, that I may bless the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Acts 16. In verse 25. Oh, read it with me. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. And what? Singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And then suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were what? Praise God. What were they doing? Amen. They were praising and praying. And the keeper of the prison awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had left, drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he knew he was going to get killed anyways. But Paul called out with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm for we are all here. Now Paul could have just boogied on and out of there with everyone. And he said, No, the Lord ain't said to go. Even... See, Paul wasn't caught up in his circumstance, was he? Come on, he was chained and everything. All of a sudden, the earthquake, the chains come off. Man, everybody went, oh, the place is going to fall in. Oh, man. earthquake, everybody get out of here. No, Paul said, hold on. We're not going anywhere unless the Lord says so. In verse 29. Then he called for a light, ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved and you and your what? Household. Households are your what? Loved ones. They've got to come to... Even though the devil may have them now, he's got to return them. Devil, you got to return my loved ones back to the Lord. The Bible says, And the Spirit came from God, didn't it? So we commanded the devil return our loved ones back to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Complete restoration. Hallelujah. Complete restoration. We need to have prayer. Praise. Clean house. The anointing. Which is power also, isn't it? Oh, praise be to God. 